This video will show you the basics of working with QuickCam 2D Design with vCarve. First, I'll create a new document. I'm going to make mine 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters by 10 millimeters. If you would prefer to work in inches, you can select the menu button under the draw heading and change the units from metric to inches. Next, I'm going to set up the grid. I'll select the menu button under the snap heading and click grid setup and change my grid size to 5. Now I'll make sure I have the snap to grid feature selected to ensure that all of the shapes I select will snap directly to one of the grid lines. Now I'll select the rectangle tool from the draw menu and move my mouse down to the desired starting position, click a single time, move my mouse up to the desired end location and click a second time to set the shape. Next I'll drop the tool by either going over to the draw subheading and selecting the cancel or selection tool or simply press the escape key on the keyboard. Now I want to give the corners of my rectangle a nice fillet so first I will select the rectangle to do that I need to make sure I actually select the line of the rectangle clicking in the center of the rectangle won't actually select the shape so select the outside edge now go under the add subheading and type in the uh, size of the fillet in this case I will leave it at five millimeters and then I'll click the fillet button to give the corners a nice radius if for some reason I was unhappy with that last selection I can always use the undo button under the file subheading to get rid of that last selection uh, but in this case I want to redo that because I want to leave the radius on the corner now I'll add some text to the center of the rectangle I'll go up to the text tool under the draw subheading and I'll move my mouse down and click once in my starting location move my mouse up and click a second time in my end location to bring up the add text window from here I can type in what I want my text box to say I can select a font which will leave it Arial and I can either specify the height, rotation, width factor, and all of those options here, or I can do that after the fact by selecting the text and using the handles on the actual text. You'll notice five handles on the text. The bottom left corner will move the text around. The top left corner will shrink or um, expand the text up and down. Um, the top right corner will scale the text uh, evenly and the uh, bottom center one will scale the text right and left and the one on the outside will actually rotate the text. You'll notice as I move the text around it will snap to each grid location if I want a little more control over where I'm placing this text I can go over to the snap subheading and turn off snap to grid and now I can move the text very smoothly around the uh, work surface and place it wherever I want to without it snapping to the grid lines so I will scale this text down to make it so that it fits between the rectangle and then I'm going to go up and add a couple more lines underneath the text just to give it some more interesting geometry. So I'll select my line tool, I'll turn my snap back on, and underneath the text I'm just going to draw a series of lines that decrease in size as they go lower down the part. And now I might want to raise the text and the lines up slightly so I can draw a box around the text and the lines to select all of them at the same time and then just press up on the keyboard a couple of times to move 
all of the selected geometry up. Now that we're happy with our part, we can go into the cam wizard to tell the machine how to cut this out. But before we do that, we want to make sure we have a v-groove cutting tool in the machine tooling. So I'm going to go under the cam subheading and select the menu button, then select machine tooling, and ensure I have a v-groove cutter um, as one of my tools. If you don't see it here, it really needs to be added in your VR milling software, but for the sake of completing this tutorial, you can add it here by right-clicking and selecting Insert Library Tool and selecting the V-Groove Cutter from the uh, options. I'm going to right-click here to clear the tool I just added because I already have a V-Groove Cutter added in here. But once again, this really needs to be done in the VR milling software to make sure that the um, the tool tooling data is saved properly. So I'll click OK to exit that. So I'm going to go over and select the cam wizard button and it's going to ask me to save the file. I'll just name it Amtech. And now it'll ask us to first select the material we are using. This is an important step because it tells the machine how quickly it can travel and how deep to go with each pass. If we click the edit button, we can see the settings for each material that's available and we can click add to create our own material. If we use hardwood as an example, we can see that it's set to travel 1000 millimeters per minute through the material with a spindle speed of 23,000 RPM and a step down percentage of 100% of the tool diameter. So in this uh, example, if we have a tool that has a 6 millimeter diameter and we tell the machine to cut at a depth of 12 millimeters, it will require two passes to get to that depth. The idea being that the harder the material is, um, the shallower the cuts can be in order to keep the tool from chattering or breaking. So I'll click OK to exit the material editor and I'm going to select hardwood for my example and I'll click the next button. Next, I need to create machining plans to tell the machine what to do with the geometry I'm giving it. Um, I'll first select a follow plan, and this plan is just simply going to trace the geometry with the tool that I select. Uh, I have my V cutter selected, and I want to go to a depth of, say, 3 millimeters. And I'm just going to select the outside uh, rectangle and then the lines beneath the text. And all that's going to happen is that the V cutter is going to be sent down to uh, 3 millimeters from the top of the material and simply trace around the outline of the rectangle and then through each line um, underneath the text. So I'll click Calculate to generate the toolpaths for this particular machining plan and click OK to add it to the list. Next, I'll select the V carve machining plan to create a v-cut in my lettering so the only v-cutter I have available is in slot number five it's a 60 degree v-cutter and uh, I want it to go to say a maximum depth of say 10 millimeters um, that's not to say it will definitely go that deep but that's the deepest I'll allow it to go because that's the thickness of my material so I will select the text by drawing a box around it to select all of the letters at the same time. Then I'll click the Calculate button to generate the V-cut to uh, clear out all of the material um, between the, uh, the text lettering. Now that we have our two machining plans created, I can click OK. I can see them in the list. They're both using the same tool, so I'm not going to have to do a tool change. Um, I'll click next. This next section is about adding tabs if we were going to cut this um, part out completely, but we're not going to do that in this tutorial, so I'll just click next to ignore it. Um, the next option is where I'm going to locate my datum position. You can see I can make selections and move it around the part. I'm just going to leave it in the lower left hand corner of this part. I'm going to use the Denford metric post and then I'll click the check output button to watch the order in which it's actually going to um, cut this part out.
and now I'll click the post process button to generate the G code that the machine will use. Uh, it's going to ask me to save this file. Um, and then it's going to automatically open VR milling and import the file into the um, the program. Um, if I'd like to, I could actually simulate the output by clicking this 2D, 3D button up here. And it's going to generate a uh, blank billet for me. I can hit stop, rewind, and play to actually watch what's going to happen. And in the next video, I'll show you how to go about setting this file up to actually cut out on a real Denford 2600 Pro CNC router.